Good morning everybody. How are you all today? I hope you're well. It's a beautiful still morning down here in the garden. Of course an airplane goes over. <clears throat> it's that lovely time of year where the air is so still you can hear every little bit of bird song. It's a little bit damp but even so Already this morning, I can see the butterflies are out, the bees are out. It's just lovely to make the most of it when it's like this and there's no one else around yet. I mean, I like it when people are around for chats and cups of tea, but I also love this quiet time. Gorgeous. Anyway, today I'm going to be picking some rosemary. So here I am, my sage is down there. My gorgeous... Oh, it's full of spider's webs. Watch out for the spider's webs. There's a huge one there and I don't want to disturb it because she, he, I don't know how you sex a spider but she, he looks like they're, they're either asleep or they're just waiting for a fly to land. Anyway, back to the rosemary. <clears throat> exactly the same as with my sage. It's in totally the wrong place. Your rosemary likes a lot of sunshine and really free draining soil. This poor old rosemary is on the north side of the garden in really claggy wet soil but it seems to be thriving. It seems to be perfectly happy there so exactly with this age this came from a cutting about three or four years ago. A tiny wee scrap of a cutting and I I pretty much, I just healed it in there temporarily, but I'm now thinking I'm just going to leave it because it seems happy enough and by now it should have plenty big roots on it, so why bother disturbing it if it's getting on with being there quite happy. Just a note on the propagation, as I say I got this from a, a cutting, a little softwood cutting. I've never tried it myself, but I understand that it's really, really hard to grow from seed super hard. In fact, I don't know anyone who's done it. I think we all end up with our rosemary in exactly the same way. A friend gives us a cutting because the bushes get absolutely out of control. So take that cutting and run with it and say thank you very much. It's so lovely. It, in terms of the soil, apart from being free draining, they're like a, a neutral soil. If you've got a slightly limey soil, it will still grow, you'll get a smaller plant, but the fragrance will be more intense. So if you actually want that, you could add some eggshells or wood ash to make it more limey. Mine isn't, and it's gone rampant. So let's just have a few sprigs away today. Oh, just even brushing my hands through it, the smell is delumptious. Of course, once I start cutting, that smell is even more gorgeous. I'm trying not to cut back into the old wood, <clears throat> but I will. It, actually, it does need quite a bit of a trim. I tend to harvest my rosemary fresh, using it fresh. I don't tend to dry it. I, I find I don't really need to because so many friends have got massive bushes that they don't really use it for the herb itself they're using it just as a, a plant a decorative plant so generally speaking when my friends give their bushes a big old trim i get the trimmings and i dry those for use but from my own plant i just take cutters fresh as and when i need them don't need a huge amount today i'll tell you about this what i'm going to do with it in a minute <clears throat> So there we go. Oh, a little word on this little trog. I love my little trog. I've got quite a few big baskets I use for whizzing around the plot when I'm harvesting. But I find having this little one really useful for if I'm doing slightly more delicate things like harvesting flowers and herbs or harvesting seed heads from the flowers. So I didn't buy it. It was a gift and I really, really love it. Right. Let's go in the shed and have a chat about rosemary. Mm. 
Oh, it's gorgeous. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Oh, it's so lovely. So, so fresh smelling. So as I was saying when we were in the garden, I tend to pick and use mine fresh. If you do get given a load by a friend, um, just hang it up by the stalk somewhere, sort of warm, dry, let it dry out. And then once it's dried, you can strip off the leaves, just strip the leaves off. And then when you're about to use it, you want to just crush the leaves slightly to help release the volatile oils. Mm, they're so volatile, it's gorgeous. Likewise, actually, when I use it fresh, I give, them a bit, uh, I give them a bit of a crushing too. So, how can you use rosemary? Well, I'm sure a lot of you think of it in terms of a herb for meats. I actually don't know what meat it goes with, because obviously I don't eat meat. I uh, never have done, so I've got no idea. But it's also lovely to make a herb butter with, just finely chopped herbs mixed in with your butter on toast. Oh, divine or indeed for putting into breads. I love rosemary focaccia. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I'm not a huge consumer of bread, very little bread. In fact, since I've stopped having a wage, I can't remember the last time I had bread because I don't really want to buy it. But I digress, rosemary focaccia, oh my goodness, rosemary and olives, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, brilliant combination. So for me, I don't do much cooking with it. I use it for pretty much everything else. I'm just gonna put it down for a minute because it's quite sticky when it's just been cut. So what are its properties? It is astringent, it's antiseptic, it, what else does it do? It helps improve circulation. It's got myriad wonderful qualities. So now the way, I use it and some of the other uses. So around the house, uh, you can have fresh boughs brought in. So if you've just been given a load by a friend, dot them about the place, they cool the air or at least give that feeling of cooling and cleaning the air. It's that astringent quality. Um, I like to use it as a, as a bit of an antiseptic cleaner for the bathroom and the kitchen surfaces. So nice big handful, chop it, crush it up a bit, boil it up with about 500 mils of water, let it steep for about 10 minutes or so, strain it off and then that simply becomes a nice antiseptic wipe with a lovely smell, it's gorgeous in the bathroom, that's a really really nice way to use it. <clears throat> medicinally, well not really medicinally, how would you put it, I also use rosemary essential oil so I haven't, <laughs> I haven't got the time or the kit to make my own essential oils but a couple of drops of rosemary oil on a handkerchief to sniff at it's supposed to sort of stimulate and energize the brain <laughs> goodness knows I need that sometimes but also to aid concentration and I remember when I was doing all my nursing exams, some of the papers were sort of two or three hours long, that pharmacology paper, uh, I had my hanky with my rosemary oil on it. And what I used to do when I was studying and revising is I'd sniff, sniff, sniff as I was studying and revising. And then when I was in the exam, I'd sniff, sniff, sniff. And look, I passed, I got a first, yay! <laughs> so that kind of worked for me. <clears throat> As I was saying about the blood circulation, one of the main things I use it for is my achy, creaky body. Mm. Quite simply, I'll take a handful like this, give them a bit of a crush, and then at home I have a little collection of sort of little muslin or cotton drawstring bags with a big loop. Put it into the bag, hang it over the hot tap in the bath, run the bath, it has a nice shush around in the bath and I have a lovely, lovely soak in that. And then with the bag, you can just <clears throat> empty it out into the compost heap afterwards and your bag is ready to go again for your next herbal bath, yay! It's supposedly a good hair rinse for dark hair and for dandruff. So like with pretty much any herbal infusion, you're looking at 
either a generous teaspoon of dried herb or two generous teaspoons of the fresh herb steeped rather like you would tea for maybe about 200 mils of water, a cup of water, steep it for 10 minutes, strain it off and then use that as your hair rinse. Yum, yum, yum. And actually using that same infusion to make um, a hot compress. So this is something um, I introduced my mum to because she's got really bad rheumatism in her elbows. My family are cursed with rubbish joints. We have great, fantastic grey cells, even into our 90s, but our joints, err. So for sort of rheumatic -y joints, arthritic -y joints, you can make a compress using that infusion, your 200 mils, as if you were making a cup of tea, make it in a teapot, strain it off, and then with rags, either old handkerchiefs, I sometimes save if pillowcases are beyond redemption, I save those to make my rags for compresses. Give the cloth a really good soak in that <clears throat> still warm infusion and then hold it to that achy, achy area and it, it does actually really help to relieve the aches somewhat. And actually, <clears throat> for sprains too, if you've got a bit of a sprain, you can alternate the hot rosemary compress with a cold and ice compress so have it really really hot as hot as you can stand let's say you've sprained your wrist you've tripped over in the garden you've gone down nothing's broken but you've got a bit of a sprain two or three minutes with the hot rosemary compress two or three minutes with ice two or three minutes with the hot rosemary compress that wonderful blood circulatory improvement quality the rosemary has it's going to flood the air with gorgeous blood brilliant so that's kind of it's that's pretty much what i use it for uh, it's mostly like i said i mostly use it just for my poor old achy body you can just like with the sage you can also make an infusion and use it as a gargle as a mouthwash because of those wonderful antiseptic qualities it's just another of those really beautiful herbs, which I think most of us tend to think, oh, that goes with the Sunday roast. And that's where we begin and end with using our herbs. There are some fantastic books on the market. If you, if you start to kind of think, oh, I'd quite like to use things in other ways around the house, go to your library, have a look online, get yourself a basic guide. And, and get experimenting with your herbs, have fun with them. The other thing, actually, just saying, I was just thinking about if you dry it, hang it to dry and you strip all the leaves off, you're then left with the stem, which will go quite hard and tough. Great as a little barbecue skewer. Oh, imagine that bit of flavor being imparted. Scrum diddly. So, for now, I'm gonna go off and do other things in the garden. I'm not sure what needs doing today. What else am I going to do today? Ah, oh, I know what I'm going to do today. Actually, I'll take you there with me now. So, maybe it's, it's having a whiff of the rosemary has aided my brain and my concentration. Um, some of you who will have seen my potato planting um, exploits back on St. Patrick's Day will remember that I spoke about one of our um, allotmenteers here called Paddy who unfortunately a year ago died. Oh, we miss him. We miss him so much. I still, still picture him. I, I kind of picture him standing on that top path looking over my plot just sort of nodding sagely sort of letting me know that I'm doing okay what an amazing lovely lovely old guy I kind of feel like he was my adopted granddad <laughs> he's lovely anyway so as I say he he died a year ago but he stopped tending his plot probably 18 months nearly two years ago he wasn't able to come down um 
and he was so popular with everybody. We were all so bereft when he went that no one could quite bring themselves to clear his plot and get it ready for someone else to rent. So it's been fallow for the last couple of years. The committee have finally decided actually the best tribute to Paddy would be to get his plot ready for someone else to use, maybe some young person to come along and who knows spend the next 50 years down here gardening just like Paddy did and that would be a great tribute to him to actually bring his plot back to life with a new person, a young person, maybe just starting out on their gardening adventure. So because that's been decided his plot is now going to have a bit of a working party when we have our community days we have a working party day once a month we are going to spend one of those days clearing out his plot because everything is so overgrown um i feel a bit emotional about this so yesterday for the first time since um since paddy went i actually went and had a look at his plot hadn't been before now because Oh, it just made me too sad. Um, anyway, so I went and had a look yesterday. Just had a quite few moments there on my own, thinking about him and picking some of his apples because there are loads of them. And the committee has said, please, everybody, take his fruit, share it, enjoy it. So I'm going to take you down there in a minute because I, I'm going to pick some more fruit today because it's, people haven't been picking it. And then I thought of something nice I'd like to do for Paddy before his orchard gets flattened and before all the fruit drops and rots, because I think there's quite a few people on site don't know to go and pick. So I'm gonna do a pick and then I'm gonna put them somewhere that's a bit more public for people to reach into. But I'll show you that when we come to it, because I hope it's going to be really special. Okay, let's go and have a look at his plot. Oh, it's all a bit overgrown down this end. So, that there is Paddy's old fruit cage. The area in front was given to someone else about a year ago, but that was all his veggies down there. Anyway, let's go and have a closer look at his, um, at his fruit. Oh, makes me sad. Oh, and look. Oh, God, love it. His shed's falling down. Can we rescue it? It depends, I suppose, on when the, when the new person comes, whether they want to try and rescue it. What's really lovely, though, is his tools, with permission of his family, were sort of divvied out amongst us. And I've got one of his lovely, lovely hoes with the handle, the wooden handle is worn where his hands have been on it so it's really lovely I feel like when I'm holding it it's sort of where Paddy held it. Look at these briars up here. Actually loads of the fruits going over. I've been having some blackberries and some of these autumn raspberries. Oops! Thanks Paddy. Oh it's not quite ripe I'll have it anyway. Mm -mm. And then <clears throat> Loads and loads. See, this is what happens when a garden isn't tended for a couple of years. All the netting, all the netting on the top, it's all collapsed. The trees have gotten far too big. Um, they've missed their prunings. Oh my goodness. But you probably can't pick it up through there, but there is still a ton of fruit to pick. And through there, I'm not going to go in with the camera because I'll probably trip and get myself scratched. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and do a pick. Look at the colour of this, isn't that pretty? I'm going to do a big pick to share, like I said, with some folk that didn't know that we were supposed to be coming in and helping ourselves and enjoying memories of Paddy while we do so. Right, let's go and get picking. Oh dear Paddy, we miss you, but we're very, very glad we got to meet you 
and got to hear your pearls of wisdom. What a star. So for now, I've put a few of his apples here on a very special bench. Oh, this bench. Thank you, Paddy.